Yes. For all those involved, I remember to hit record this week. So here we go. All right. Standing by for the virtual book tour launch, featuring Sarah Weiss, saying hello to Lisa Thomas L. in the process. I'm going back to share the screen. So this comes up. Uh, tell me what you see, guys. The launch anniversary screen. Cool. So yeah. what, virtual book tour. I love it. All right. So we're about ready to go live. Do, 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 do. Three, two. Hi, Lisa. Yeah. What's up, Adam? Sarah. Hello. Ricky, buddy. Arizona. Hey, love you, baby. Yo, love baby. You. Yo, baby. Uh, hey. How you doing, girl? Oh, fantastic. Is, uh, is the sun rising? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Adrian, we done it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I am. Babe, I'm keeping an eye on Facebook so I can transfer, uh, share it. So I'm not watching the Zoom room at the moment until that's done. All right, done. so hop, hop on to uh, Adam Connects Community. And we should be live in the Adam Connects Community right now. Uh, getting ready to bring you. Oh, and if you're on Facebook uh, Live yeah, while you're on the Zoom, please mute the Facebook Live. And I'm going to go share it to Sarah's group. The not born this way group. Okay. Adam connects community. If I click, click on the notification, it opens it up and it starts talking to me. So I got to go the manual way. There we go. All right. All right. It is shared there. Uh, standing by for more <laughs> sharing, getting ready to launch the virtual book tour launch anniversary. Uh, share to my news feed. All right. I did it. I did it. Woo! Woohoo! <laughs> All right. Countdown to showtime. Everybody, buckle in. Hit your mute button for a second if you don't mind. And we go in five, four, four and a half. No, that's going the other way. Three, two, one. Greetings, everybody. Adam Bricker here live with the virtual book tour launch anniversary featuring none other than Sarah Weiss, the SAS boss. She's so good at what she does. I married her. And we are absolutely thrilled to have her on board. We have some special guests today. You're going to hear some behind the story, behind the scenes secrets of how Not Born This Way came together. But you're also going to hear the story of what's happened in the year since its, since its launch, how Sarah became a best-selling author, how she launched an entire coaching platform, and why she's surrounded by such amazing, powerful, incredible people. Sarah, say hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. So happy to be here. And everyone later. say hi to Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Great hey, to be Sarah. here. Yo, baby. <laughs> you guys are in for a treat out there in Facebook land today. You're going to hear all that insight and information. We got Harrison. We have Frankie M. Powers. Bobby Joe is on it. Lisa Thomas L. We're going to have uh, quite a show time. We're going to have a bunch of other people as well. Go ahead, and if you need to comment on Facebook down below, uh, if you need the Zoom link to hop on with us, let us know as well. We'll make sure that happens. But until then, um, any initial words, Frankie and Powers? No, it's just an honor and a, and a privilege to be here. Um, Sarah actually, uh, you know, has guided me on, on on putting my book together, which is just released, you know, a week ago um, today on Amazon. And uh, I couldn't have gotten here without her. So it's it's an honor and a privilege to be here, Coach. So happy to have you here with us. His book is incredible, by the way, which we'll talk about when he comes back on. There it is. <laughs> Adam's good at what he does. An incredible book. And I was actually honored to be asked to write the foreword. So I'm actually uh, really, really pleased to be part of it with you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure. And really, um, it's uh, thank you for the beautiful words and 
And it's been great working with you. It's been really uh, surreal. So we'll, we'll talk later on when, when it's my turn. You got it, Frankie. We're going to bring you on. Harrison, before we put you back in the green room with all those extra hors d'oeuvres and the entertainment back there, uh, any opening words for Sarah? Tara is a work of art, baby, and uh, that that is, you know, uh, a path to higher consciousness in and of itself. Uh, she's the epitome of the fact that love creates money and influence and fun, and uh, you know, she's not even legal. <laughs> that's <laughs> even, so yeah, that's that's where it's at <laughs> for me. <laughs> Harry, oh my goodness, Harrison's going to have some major nuggets for us when we come on, uh, when we bring him back in. And Lisa, Lisa, the floor is yours. Say hello to everybody. Hello, 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 everybody. Lisa! Uh, it's such a damn honor to be on, with, you know, on this, this format with you. I'm super proud of you. I love mm. you, girl. You are a straight bad ass. <laughs> that, that... Listen, this this is the call you want to be on because we're talking about a superpower bad thing. My face hurts already from smiling so much. We just started. <laughs> all right, all right. And Bobby Joe, you know, we're, we're not going to leave you out of this part of the segment. We're going to have you on as the first guest. Uh, but b- before we get started, would you like to say anything to Sarah? Oh, I love you so much, girl. It has been absolutely an amazing journey. Um, I know I haven't known you long. It seems like I have. It seems like I've known you forever. Um, But it's only been four months. And then that's where the journey all started. I'm honored to be on here. I'm honored to be your friend. I'm honored to be part of this community. Bobby Joe, it's been such a pleasure. I mean, I was referred to you by a friend, a friend of mine introduced us in a group chat and I think it was about a month later that I sent her a message just saying I just want to thank you so much for connecting me with Bobby Joe she's such a light in my life already so um, I'll thank you in person for being such a light in my life and so happy to have you here with us thank you so honored all right guys put your seat belts on we're going to send you back to the green room you'll be able to hear us you'll be able to chat with us from there um, but we won't be able to hear or see you for a little bit so Um, We will get you back one at a time. I'll try to give you some verbal clues to let you know when we're bringing you on. And uh, Lisa, you know, I'm saving you for last, right, baby? (laughs) All right. We love you. All right. Hey, honey, it's just me and you. (laughs) Hi, hubby. So you guys in Facebook land, you may be watching a husband and wife together talk about business success. We didn't start that way. Uh, We started, nobody had ever read Not Born This Way. Um, Sarah was just getting started, you know, freaking out about being an author, freaking out that her editor sent her a final edition with mistakes in it. I'll never forget, honey, you did one of the most amazing things in in accessing your community. And and you put out a a post right here on, on Facebook that said, would anybody be willing to read a chapter of my yet to be published book? Um, and, and you expressed your thoughts. Um, and what was it like? And, and how did people show up to read that that edited version um, and then give you their feedback? Oh, I was blown away because, yeah, like, like you said, I was freaking out. Um, I, I've never considered myself to be an author. So this is a message to anyone who has a story in them who doesn't feel like an author or a writer just get it on paper. You start with one letter that turns into a word. It turns into a sentence, it turns into a paragraph, it turns into a page, it turns into a chapter. All of a sudden you have a book. It's crazy how it happened because I myself never felt like I was a good writer, but things fell into place. And then when I got the final uh, copy and I could find errors in it, I was like, oh my gosh. And I had a deadline I wanted to meet and I'm an entrepreneur. So I'm, I'm always fast moving. And yeah, I, I put a call to action for help, <laughs> help me <laughs> who wants to read a chapter and see if they can find any errors. And I think within a day or two, every chapter of my book was accounted for. Someone was reading a chapter and finding whatever needed to be fixed. And within 24 hours, 48 hours, all the errors, spelling errors and grammar errors were found because of my incredible community. 
I mean, it takes a village for everything, not just to raise a kid, but to write a book. So this book has a piece of everyone in my community who was there for me, who supported me, who edited a chapter. Um, as I was writing it, I had this community and I was sharing a little bit here and there and uh, reading a chapter here and there. And there was love, support, feedback, um, the reactions that I got, the tears that were had. Uh, let me know I was on the right track. So again, I just, I got to thank everyone who was part of my journey in writing this book. You're all part of this book. This book exists because of you. So I just so much love to you guys. Thank you so much. This, this, this aspect of creating your book blew me away. Um, you had all these people participating before, before it even came out. And then we, we went through a process through the virtual book tour and through your own efforts and through your community to ask people to buy the book before it existed and that you would give them the promise of an autographed copy. And oh boy, did they step up. Boy, did they step up. So many people stepped up to ask you for an autograph that it became a labor, a labor of love for you to actually sign and mail out that many books but we were in the middle of COVID at that time so go ahead and tell the audience what it was like to get that support and and as a first-time author to actually be autographing your book well you again helped me with that in many ways more ways than one um one being <laughs> one being that yeah I was freaking out that I had over 100 books to sign <laughs> and this is where the book tour was birthed this is where it happened you said let's make it fun let's get a bunch of people on camera and we'll have a book tour a virtual book tour during COVID when obviously we can't do anything in person and we'll have all your friends on we'll do it all together as a family and it made it really fun. Whereas I was in the mode of, I've got a hundred books to sign. Oh my God, I got to mail them out. I got to do this. And yeah, I got tons of pictures of it. And it turned, it turned out to be really, really fun. Um, I think we did three live videos. We had all kinds of guests come on and share their perspective some of which had already started uh, started reading the manuscript and uh, I just I got to bring on the community and love on them and yeah I was signing them on video and it just it turned into something really really cool which again you have taken and done for so many other people as well and I've, I've been watching them watching them evolve and all the incredible authors you've been having on to share their story and to share their insights and bring on their loved ones and their support system and uh, so I'm, I'm really glad we did that when this whole COVID pandemic led us to doing this. You know it's amazing that 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 you say that in this tool the the virtual book tour with one of your one of your guests who's on today, which is um, uh, Frankie Frankie Empowers, he was on a couple of weeks ago. He's just launched his book. This whole community has come come together for that. One of the people in the audience who actually got, had you sign a book, she ended up writing her own book. Anna Clay's a, an opera singer. She wrote a show, but there's nobody to perform the show during COVID. So she turned it into a book, published it, and we had her on as a guest this year. We had Kelly, Kelly Carius, writes a book and it teaches people that there's no such thing as a bully. Her, her program is so powerful and so impactful. Now she's part of the Empowered Life community. And, and, and I want you to share with everybody what it was like to take these people from Facebook, from your businesses, from supporting you in the book and then turn around and create a community where everybody can vibrate together on, on an elevated level. That has been the greatest shift. I mean, COVID has become a blessing in many, many aspects. And I know that there's a lot of pain that's happened, a lot of things that have taken turns that weren't expected, but in, in my life, I like to see the silver linings and the blessings and things. And I saw this new world, this new virtual world really expand really fast. And a lot of people started turning to the virtual world to create income, to create purpose, to create meaning, uh, businesses, all kinds of things started to be birthed in this virtual world. And I saw so many people who were very powerful start to say, hello, I want to do something. And 
I saw separated groups and I said, how do we bring them all together? Mm. How do we get collaboration instead of competition? And the kind of people who I surround myself with, they're all powerful. They're all impactors. They like to impact the world. They like to give guidance, insight, share what they've learned over their years. So I know a lot of coaches. I know a lot of influencers, very powerful people. And what I've seen, and it's very consistent with a lot of coaches and impactors, is that they, you put them in front of the people who need them, they will change their life in a couple minutes like that. But something that's happened since this new virtual world expansion has happened, people have had to get out of their comfort zone and build an online business. It's not like you can just coach and people will be there. How do you get the people who need you in front of you? How do I get in front of the people who need what I have to give? Well, I have to create a sales funnel or a website. I have to create an email list, get lead generators. I have to be a marketer. I have to be a salesperson and be able to close people on a Zoom call. I need to know how to operate Zoom. <laughs> I need to know how to do copywriting. I need to know how to do so many things beyond just coaching. So I've seen so many powerful coaches who are missing one or two pieces of that puzzle and aren't getting in front of the people who need them. So that's why you know, after writing this book, after doing the virtual book tour and starting to connect with the people who resonated with this book, my message, who I'm about, and the people around me just started to magnetize more of this, I started to see where I could do something that no one else has been doing. If you go online, you see a lot of people, we, we say they, uh, they're they selling shovels to the gold diggers. There's a lot of people who sell their info marketers, selling info to the coaches who need help to start their business and other people. And I said, screw that. I'm just going to do it for them. So we just created a platform where if you are a coach and we certify you on the platform, we give you the clients. We don't teach you how to get them. We give them to you. So um, that's been really, really fun. Uh, again, working with incredible people. I've always believed in the power of proximity. If you have four or five friends who have everything you want, you'll be the fifth friend who has everything you want. And I've always believed in that. I really, I really embrace that scenario because I get to work with a lot of high profile coaches and look at what they have. You know, people who are making a million dollars a year in this space, they all have the same thing. They have a powerful CRM. They have a great promotional tool. They have tons of clients. They have all the tools behind them. And it, it, it takes a minimum, and I want you guys to embrace this number, a minimum of over $80,000 to put all those tools in the background in play to make a million dollars. How do you do that before you have a million dollars? This is a quandary that so many people in today's marketplace are facing. But Sarah, you've come up with that solution. You've spent the money. You've put together the tools. And now it's a plug-in for people who want to thrive in the, in the coaching industry, whether it's a business coach, a life coach. I, I believe you have a cooking coach as well. From all varieties, people are teaching and running courses. Um, you know, how long does it take for somebody to do this on their own? And how long would you expect them to get the setup through you? Oh, online, it could take, it could take forever. I mean, especially if you're the type of person who has this sense of pride where it's like, I got this and I've lived with that. And it is a downfall of humanity. This, I got this mentality, the bigger, the vision you have, the bigger, the support you need. So if you want to be a million dollar coach or a coach or speaker that impacts millions of lives, you need massive support, which can cost a lot of money. It can cost a lot of time, energy, connecting with the right people. So that can take it can take years, many years. It can take a decade to get to a point where you're happy with your business and you're impacting a lot more people, making a living that is standalone. Fortunately for me, I have a lot of the skills, uh, the, the marketing skills, the business building skills. I, I had to learn how to build sales funnels and uh, email lists and lead generators and create catchy content and, and do all this stuff. But I still hired mentors. I hired a marketing firm back when I first started. I had to pay for registration. I had to hire someone for graphic design for my logo and for some of my banner images. I had, luckily, I married someone who does digital branding and does virtual book tours. So I got really lucky in that connection. Um, and I can't tell you how much I value that because it's really helped me in not only my happiness and love life, but my success in my businesses and my book launch. So for me, it took me at least 
half a year to a year to start generating an income that outweighed some of the expenses I was paying. And then if I want to expand, which I I started to expand, I had to spend more money, more time, more energy, create new tools, resources, build, build connections, reach out on different platforms on Facebook and different groups where I would just start to build these connections. It's a lot. It's a lot to build an online business. The coaching part, easy. Get on a call and speak. That's coaching. You know, feel the energies, be present. I can do the coaching, no problem. But it's the rest of the the stuff that becomes a problem for many powerful coaches that prevents them from being in front of the people they need the most or that need them the most. So with my program, sorry, I I forgot to answer that question. With my program, um, with within about a week, within about three hours worth of content, once this is once the the course is finally done, it'll be about three to five hours worth of content and some testing. You'll be certified to be on this platform, and if you're ready to be a coach, as soon as you go in at the start of each quarter, people who need you will see you in the list and go, "I want to learn from them." And that's it. It's it. It's that easy. And speaking of that, how about we bring on a couple of people who are working with you in that scenario? Well, we have uh, we have uh, Bobby Joe, and we have April, who are waiting in the green room. Let's see if we can't get them to both come on over here. We got uh, we got a- uh oh, April's driving. You ready to be on, or do you need to be in the waiting room for a little bit? Me? <laughs> yeah, you. Hey, how are you? Um, I'm driving, so if you want to give me a few. All right, cool. Hang out in the or, green room. We got extra hors d'oeuvres. When you arrive, you'll have uh, all kinds of nutrition when we'll bring you back in. Perfect. <laughs> hey, Bobby Joe. Hey, Adam. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Um, so we want to bring you in. Uh, I'm going to go grab somebody else as well. But let me go ahead and uh, let you uh, speak to Sarah between the book and Powered Life what do you think people should know about Sarah at this point? I think that people should know that Sarah speaks her truth, but she also helps you find your own. And helps you to end up accepting who you truly are and to step into that, which actually really empowers you. Yeah, well, for you, it's been easy to see your greatness. So I'm just, I'm so blown away by how fast you've said, yeah, you're right. I am a badass. And you step right <laughs> into it. And uh, it's been really an honor to watch you as well as the other people, the other coaches who have come in again, maybe missing one or two little pieces of that massive pie and to be shown how you don't need to be an expert in that for you to thrive massively. And you are just, you're showing people what you're capable of, your value. And I just, I really appreciate having you as part of this with me. Yeah. So I drew a card before I even joined and it said it was about truth. So it was so appropriate because even in the book, you're talking about, you know, speaking your truth Mm -hmm. and stepping into your truth and overcoming different struggles and challenges that we ended up have that we all end up having and how you actually did and how it actually empowered you and made you really step into your true authentic self proud of you girl thank you thank you and i'm (laughs) proud of you in fact if you want to share maybe a moment you know early knowing me that i've helped you say to yourself Oh my gosh, I am very powerful. Like I, I'm, I'm thinking of a couple of times in particular where you were resistant of your own gifts and were finally able to say, holy crap, these are gifts and I need to embrace them. I think definitely with the gift of my spirituality and my spiritual side, the gift of my cards, um, different how, how my cards, how I end up reading my cards and how it just ends up happening. And at first, uh, I've been doing this for years, but I kept it hidden because I was so scared of judgment and everything else. And you just ended up helping me realize that this is who I am and I needed to accept myself first before I accepted, before I should say I I needed to accept myself before I actually thought that everyone else needed to accept me. I needed to accept myself first. 
And that was huge for me to step into that and be like, bam. And that's basically what it was like, bam, this is me. This is who I am. I'm tired of hiding. And it was so liberating and so freeing. And that, that's what this is. That's why this is in parentheses, because we were born this way, but we weren't born in a way that allows us to accept ourselves. This, what you just described is my book. And that's what's funny. And that's what Adam was saying. You know, what has happened since writing the book? I've surrounded myself with people or magnetized people who resonate with the message of the book, which is to stop defining ourselves by who we think we are or who, what our pasts are or our limitations and disadvantages and finally own who we want to become you know, own ourselves, turn our disadvantages into a superpower. That's why we're so well connected because everything you just said is literally the message of my book. You know, once I accepted who I was and um, owned it and stepped into it and saw it as a beautiful thing instead of like a curse, like I did for so long, I was able to finally be accepted from other people and be more powerful. I stepped into this great power, just like you're doing. You're doing exactly the same thing. And it just makes you like, yeah, it's just so freeing. And I think that also one thing that you also said, Sarah, is like when we end up, um, I'm trying to think of the word, having what people, what we think other people think of us, um, judgment, right? We're coming out of our perspective of what we think other people think of us. I know this is like roundabout ways that I'm trying to explain it and everything. But when we actually come and take ourselves out of it and our self perspective out of it and just come out of love instead of that fear of judgment. Wow. Well, I mean, I can, I'll, I'll ask right now because there's people watching on Facebook. Who on Facebook, put your hands up, put some hearts, say, say your name or whatever. If you resonate with what she just said, you know, about thinking about what other people are thinking about us. And we're making it up in our head. We're thinking they think this. I'm sure many on fa- on Facebook watching are like, yeah, been there, done that. Yeah. And it's a huge, it is, it's a huge shift. It's a huge t- change to be stepping into your own power and your own authentic self, because you can end up going with your gut and it's like the knowing, and there's so much areas where it changes the stress right? Because you have ended up living really under a rock, under the own rock that you actually placed there. Yeah. I considered myself in a mental prison. I actually mentioned it in my book a couple of times that I felt like I was in my own, I was behind bars in my own mind based on my own illusions. The bars were an illusion that I created based on my assumptions of what people thought about me or what I thought they thought about me. It was just, it was terrible. And that's the rock that you're talking about or bars, you know, anyone else can consider something else that they feel trapped in or under because of what we think others think. It's just, ah. Thank you. These are all some great points. And anybody who's just joining in right now, we're, we're live on the virtual book tour. This is our launch anniversary. Uh, we're featuring Sarah Weiss, author of Not Born This Way. She came on before the book was ever published a year ago, and now she's a best-selling author with a brand new coaching platform. We have special guests of uh, Bobby Joe and Lisa Thomas L on with us. Uh, we're talking about uh, the subject of how you see yourself and the illusion of how you think other people see you. And, you know, one of the greatest gifts I ever got in my life, and you're going to hear something similar when Harrison joins us a little later, is I'm no, no longer under the illusion that the way I see the world is the way the world really is. So it, it is so freeing and so liberating. Uh, and, and Sarah, before we bring on Lisa, I just want you to comment on, you know, when you coach people and they go through that moment of, of liberation, what what are some of the comments? What are some of the feelings that they express to you about that? I think every single person has said this one thing. There's other things, but this one thing, it feels so light. We crush ourselves under our own weight of assumptions and illusions and pain and wounds and past limitations and disadvantages. We crush ourselves with this weight. And it's like we carry it all day long. That liberation of accepting that the way we are is perfect. It doesn't need to change. We don't have to become anything. 
We don't have to become great because we already are great. It's this huge weight that gets lifted. And every single person I've helped own themselves, love themselves, accept themselves, and step into their powers, they say the same thing. It feels so light. Cool. Absolutely awesome. How about you, Lisa? I've been I've been working with you for a long time. I know your past, and I'm not going to share it. You can share whatever you want. But what's it been like to be working with Sarah? Well, I, re, I listen. This this relationship with me and Sarah started. Um, I'm gonna say maybe two years ago. I believe. I I, I don't recall. Um, but we were in an accountability group together, and I remember when she said, "I'm going to start writing this book." Right. She said it, and before the accountability call was over, and it was only like a three-month plan. It was only like for three months, and she was done, right? <laughs> and me and her were talking, and I was saying, oh, I want to write a book and stuff, and I want to do this. And she was trying to hold, hold me accountable and stuff. And, and, but, but then it was done. Like the book was, the book was written, and it was being published. And I was like, what? <laughs> like... This was lightning and speed, but that, let me tell you something. This is something I learned from that experience, right? And I, and 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 me as a as a um, author as well, I've learned something from this. People have asked me questions like, um, "How long? How long will it take?" And um, okay, you know, I have a book idea in me, and and how much long? How long do you think it's going to take? You know, the, and they're thinking like years. They're talking years to write it and I remember like I, I co-authored this book and it took me a day <laughs> to write this chapter and and you know what took me so long but in my mind it was going on for months but when I sat down it took me a day and why because the deadline was that at five I just sit my ass down <laughs> I remember. I remember how you would talk about it. And it's like, I, I might start today, might start tomorrow. <laughs> Girl, get it yeah, done. You like, have it in you. I was like, oh, and I started calling the angels, the, my, my lineage, and saying, this then, tomorrow, we got to sit down and get this done. And it flowed effortlessly. And, and I, there's something, and I, and I can imagine it had to happen for you because there's something outside of when, who I was when I sat down that emerged while I was writing. Mm -hmm. That person who sat down is not the same person who wrote the, who wrote the chapter. I was sitting there, I, I was facing, I was getting upset. Oh shit, this is <laughs> so, so don't let that part of you that keep telling you, oh, you don't really have nothing to say. Nobody's really going to want to hear it. And like, oh my God, how are you going to do it? You know, because that's, you talking about courage. That's some bold ass, bold, bad ass stuff to just say, okay, I'm going to write a book and, you know, um, I want, and, and get people to, to start purchasing. I, I was one of them. Get people to start purchasing something that is, doesn't even exist yet. Yeah. yeah. Which, which held you accountable to a far different level of accountability. Like you held yourself like freaking amazing. And in no time, like she wasn't thinking about, well, okay, I'm gonna start writing this book and how am I gonna publish it? And, and what's gonna happen after this? And what's gonna happen after that? I never heard any of that. It was like, oh my God, I'm writing it. And girl, can you read this? And, uh, and it was, yeah. she flowed effortlessly. And so to be around that's what made me want to be around her because that energy is contagious. It's like, yo, this is that, that baby, right? That's this is why I need to be around. I don't know. Like it's so much COVID, everything like my, lost my mom, everything was happening. Right. But I had a community of people that I knew was like my, my rocks, no matter what was happening. In my life, I knew I had a community of people that was my mom. So if you, like, we can say, well, I was brought up in this, or I was brought up in that. Listen, there's somebody within the community that could probably relate to that same story. But it's not about the story. It's about where am I going from here? And so you helped me, 
I have had many coaches have had a lot of different things, but this in the interaction that we've had that you helped me to see that what I was seeking was already here. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was already here. The thing that I thought I lost was never lost. It was never lost. I thought that because of some things that happened to me as a child, that state my innocence was ripped away from me to only discover that my innocence it's my superpower. It's always been there. It's always been there. It never went anywhere. But I was trapped in this illusion that, oh my God, I, it's like dedicated and committed to being a damn victim. Like, so dedicated. Like, nope, I'm going to be a victim and I'm going to tell everybody, tell the world about how much I'm a victim. And this is why I did the things that I did. And they're going to agree of how much, because people do agree. Yeah, yeah, well. That's, it, it should be, but I said no. I, I that's not my life. I don't. That's not who I am, and that's not who I want to be. So we say we live in a land of the free, and we want to be free, but we say it in an imprisonment inside of ourselves. Talking about I'm free, or somebody needs to let me release me because you know they they holding me back. I've heard that for a long time. I've said it to myself for a long time. So to discover that this shit was, this was all an illusion. I, I created that. I thought that I was lost, that my childlike curiosity was lost, only to discover that it, it was never lost. People wanted me to be quiet and, and recognizing that people wanted me to be quiet because then they would see something in me that's them. Mm. So as long oh, as I yeah. stay quiet, then I, they can be comfortable with who they are. I mean, me and you talked yesterday and I was like, you know what? I decided I don't feel like shutting the hell up no more. I don't want to stop talking. I don't want to not be me. I, I'm tired of being whoever the hell I think that people think that I think I should be. Like, I don't give a damn. Yeah. I, think I need to be me. That I need to be me. I need to like shout out. I, and, and it's not just me being me, but I'm going to be me for my mother. I'm going to be me for my father. I'm going to be me for all those people because mm. they told me to shut up because somebody told them to shut up. I'm going to be me for everybody. And this ain't no, well, you know, you got to do it for yourself. I am doing it for myself. I'm doing it because there was generations of me that was told to be quiet. I refuse. Oh my goodness, you make it, you you make such a powerful statement. You make it so hard for me because here I'm saying, Lisa, you're done with your time. Now you have to stop talking. <laughs> ah, how am I going to say that with a woman who will not be closed off, will not be shut down? <laughs> Lisa, thank you so much for bringing your message on. Yeah. By the, by the way, I know you're doing some, some work right now. If people want to hear more from you, what, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Listen, on Empowered Life. Power life, being authentically me on, on my page, Lisa Thomas Bell. Yeah, you got it. For those who don't know, <laughs> Lisa is an empowered life coach. Uh, you're going to be hearing from a bunch of empowered life coaches. She is very powerful herself, also an author, uh, successful, I might add. And she is very versed at helping people connect with their traumas, with their experiences, and to step into our power. Again, you know, this, this, since writing this book, I've magnetized a lot of people who also have seen a past where we let it define us, let it shut us up, let it silence us. And we broke free of that breaking free of those illusions. It's the most powerful thing you can do for yourself. And it's probably the greatest statement of self-love. So she also leads the 21 day love yourself challenge with me um, for many good reasons. And she is someone who'll help you love yourself just like I love to do for other people. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Lisa. Oh, my pleasure. I, I love, love you, Lisa. I love y'all. <laughs> I love myself too. Look at that. I love Sarah. I love Sarah so much. I married her. Um, <laughs> but I also love Harrison. And uh, Harrison's going to join us here on the uh, virtual book tour launch anniversary. And uh, talk about love. Talk about setting himself free. Uh, Harrison, welcome to the show. Hi, Adam. And uh, just in, in reference to Lisa, I delegate myself to everybody else. So I don't even know what. <laughs> 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 it, 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 it just because I love your answer, I'm going to ask you, how are you doing today? 
I'm doing sensational, terrific, amazing, phenomenal, outstanding, incredible, awesome, turned on, tuned up, tweak, authentic, respondent, resplendent, opulent, happy, wonderful, inspired, gorgeous, and funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, I, I met Harrison through some great uh, people. He's embraced our community. He's welcomed us into his. Uh, Harrison, wonderful to have you on the virtual book tour today. Um, floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, this is beautiful, and I, I appreciate everything that you and, and uh, um, Sarah do. You guys are both awesome in every way. And and you, know, you guys are thought leaders and, you know, um, you benefit other people, you benefit the life, you know, you're givers as well as receivers, but, you know, the, the process of giving and receiving is one and the same. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're clear about how all that works. So, you know, when we, when we talk together, when we work together, there's a whole level of transcending shame and guilt about anything. So, you know, we understand that prosperity and higher consciousness are the same thing. You know, we work with uh, uh, making use of what we already have, you know, shifting our vibration into whatever direction we want to go and, you know, creating uh, on a consistent basis. So it's all beautiful and it's all, uh, you know, uh, right, it's all, you know, it's, it's all being on the wings of eagles, you know, if you will. So when we, when we learn about ourselves, basically we stand on the shoulders of everyone that came before us. And Sarah has been standing on some pretty hefty shoulders for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I include you as, as some of the, the greats that I surround myself with. Um, you know, I wrote this book about transcending, basically becoming, you know, who we want to be instead of getting trapped in, in who we think we are, who thought we were. And yeah. as soon as I, you know, transcended that illusion, people like you showed up and new perspectives started to pr present themselves. You are someone who always shows a little tweak to a perspective. And, and I mean, you're also an example of there's always another level. There's always more growth to be had. There's always uh, uh, an expansion to the current perspective. Even if you've leveled it up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times, there's always another level of expansion. Um, being able to speak at one of your events, the um, I think it was the uh, small okay. shifts, big changes event and seeing the people that you surround yourself by as well. I think you had Dean, Mar uh, Dean Martini on there, Forbes Riley, uh, you yourself, um, to be able to speak with them and amongst them. Uh, it was such an honor and a pleasure. And I know that it was only because I was able to break my illusions that was keeping me down. And as soon as that happened, the level of character I was surrounded by, and I don't want to say, I'm not going to say level of character, but the expansiveness of the perspectives that were surrounded by me um, were incredible. Um, so I love, I love when, whenever you open your mouth to talk about some of the shifts in your perspective um, that have taken you from where you used to be and where you were uh, maybe stuck or defining yourselves to where you're, where you're at now um, and what you see in the world, the beauty, the vivid color you now see after letting go of those illusions, it, it blows my mind and everyone else's minds, who, whoever has a, the honor to listen to what you have to say. So if you want to share a little bit about how your perspectives have shifted since the day of how you used to define yourself to now, um, I know people will love to hear it. Oh, my God. Well, I'm, I, you know, my life has turned on a dime, actually, more than once. But the, the, the first and major one was probably the one that seems most dramatic to people. I mean, I can give you dozens of, uh, of examples, but in my early years, I was autistic. I was incredibly shut down, um, unable to use my senses in the way that normal people use theirs. I, uh, I heard about every third word of what people said instead of any flow of what they were talking about. My vision was very foggy. My um, body sense was very painful. And um, my life was a disaster. It was, it was really uh, some dramatic ex, uh, um, kind of example of what, you know, hell could have looked like from my deepest imagination. And so, you know, um, and I began to explore, you know, what is this all about? What is this pain all about? What is this difficulty all about? Why is this, why am I so you know, unable to even be in the same company of decent, uh, you know, kind of um, 
people and carry on a decent conversation. I couldn't even carry on a conversation while I was 28 years old. And so in a moment, uh, I'm sitting, if I can take you back to 1972 or something like that, 1973, I'm sitting in my living room in, um, uh, in a small apartment in Cleveland, Ohio, and without any kind of warning, uh, my consciousness is yanked out of my body into this incredible experience of speed. And the first thing that I'm noticing is that there's colors coming at me, there's, there's patterns coming at me, and I'm in the universe, I'm not a on earth i am just a light beam traveling faster than the speed of light and i'm watching planets birth and die and galaxies spin and you know i'm hearing choirs of angels behind me which is what i now interpret that unearthly music to be and i'm just moving and moving and moving you know and then there's uh, this uh, gigantic experience of you know the big bang type thing where everything is you know, falling behind me as I move into stars and suns and through through things of uh, of enormous um, you know um, space. And uh, I don't know how long I was in that, but when I was deposited back into my body, I was not the same human being. All of my maladies of unawareness were changed. I was uh, in the moment. Uh, I was aware of my eternalness. Uh, I was aware of energy and things were translucent for me. So, you know, I, I went from what was once the, the great pretender of me into something that was real and authentic. I could see energy. I had uh, a clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient experiences. And, uh, you know, my language changed my... Uh, focus changed, my perspective changed. You know, in the early parts of my life, I was focused on me and how do I get out of this thing? And now I'm focused on how to make, you know, everyone else better in every way that I possibly can. So, you know, uh, during the first 28 years of my life, I lived on a wing and a prayer. And from that point on, you know, I rose to the place of where I embrace life in a way that is really um, you know, enchanted in a way. And, you know, the first part of my life was a, sort of a sleep walking experience and then afterwards i became a an aware walking experience so um what can i tell you the shifts that that go on are you know uh, the ability to learn how to create your success learn how to create your life it's sort of a self-therapy self-repair life repair experience you know with a universal with a universal solution to everything <laughs> so perspective is much more important than events so in the early part of my life, I was all focused on what was the event. This this moves me. This makes me angry. This makes me, uh, you know, kind of uh, shy. This makes me, you know, whatever the the, the the reigning emotion of the moment was. And now I just have a perspective on everything. So none of it, the events have very little meaning to me when, when I... I can see the big picture of what it means in the long run and what it means to each of us. So we can, it's a way of respecting oneself. It's a way of deserving to manifest. It's a way of just, you know, to keeping to get better and better at whoever I am. And, you know, nobody's perfect, but, you know, we are the perfect us, whatever that happens to be. So. I love how you're, you're talking a lot about perspective and, and that's really, you know, what I mentioned a lot in my book, you know, getting trapped in our perspective, the, the life where we're victims and we're blaming, we're judging when we're in it, it feels real. It feels like, you know, we are the victim of the universe of the people around us and all this stuff. So, I mean, I wrote a lot about that. And I would love to ask you, what would you say to someone who's stuck in this, this world of their own creation where everything's happening to them instead of for them or the way they see it that way? What would you say to help them have that little moment where it's like, maybe I can change this based on shifting my perspective? Yeah, get off of yourself, because that's the first thing. So, you know, in the in the event level or at the level where you are in the victim, you are always concerned with yourself. Start to be concerned about others. Start to be concerned about, you know, what is important to the world and what is important to you. What is the gift that you are giving? What's the secret gift that you've been given so that you can give it to somebody else? You know, you want to mind your self story so that you don't 
really focus on, you know, that, that all things are happening to you, but you want to see that all things are happening for all and that you are creating this. So you're always the, you're always the common denominator and whatever is negative in your life, but you're also the common denominator and whatever is positive. So you have a choice. Just make that choice. Get off of yourself, be the common denominator and everything that's good. And then your life will change. One of the things that, that shifted me big time was right before my first awakening experience, you know, about a quarter of a second prior to this incredible Satori, sudden enlightenment, Satori is a sudden enlightenment, was the fact that about a moment before, you know, I said, well, what if all this pain has something to do with love, you know? And that's when the, that's when it happened. When I really was exploring the details of that, and then what is it? What if it's all love? Really, it's just some form of love. And guess what? It is. And so when that happened, you know, I opened up, and my eyes opened up simultaneously. My eye and my eyes were the same, and uh, I opened up, and and life was a very different experience for me from that moment on. I've never been the same. I've never had to go back to the the pain and the autism and the, and the hurt have been probably now 44, 45 years, basically. I won't, oh, my age. <laughs> I, I've now been in happiness, you know, and enjoy it. I rarely have a bad day and I rarely have a bad experience for longer than a few minutes because my body is so attuned to feeling good that it recalibrates instantly or as fast as it is possible in, in, in my case. So, Wow. Thank you so what much. Is, for, thank you is that. so much for sharing, Harrison. Um, it, you've got the message to everybody right now that it's really, um, no matter how you're living your life, you can shift it. If Harrison can wake up and live in pure light and pure love through all these years, um, you can too. And whether you do it on your own uh, spontaneously, whether you work on it for months at a time, uh, or whether you join Empowered Life and, and you have people guide you through the process. Oh, join Empowered Life. Join Empowered Life. Definitely. <laughs> and um, everyone should be asking themselves, like, I love the question you, you asked yourself right the moment before the Satori, um, you know, what if all this pain is actually love? Yeah. That is a question I want everyone watching this to ask themselves now, but also as soon as you're done this call, I want you to like think of that because that that is like such a powerful and beautiful question to help you open your mind and see what's really happening. The big picture that you talk about, that question is just, thank you for sharing that. It's such a beautiful question. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks, Harrison. Appreciate you have having you on. Uh, all of our love. Keep it real, baby. Keep it real. <laughs> all of our love to Mar Beth. You be well and uh, keep spreading the love. Perfect. Thank you. And you too. Yeah. Okay. You guys. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. Stay amazing. Stay stay resplendent, opulent, beautiful, phenomenal, outstanding, incredible, and and uh, 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 great influencers. So stay there. Do that. Make sure that the world changes because we all are in this together. So. Love it. Love, Love you, it. Harrison. Love you, Zay. And that's, that message is great. We're all in this together. Um, and, and this at the moment is the virtual book tour. It's the launch anniversary. We're celebrating Not Born This Way. We're celebrating the SAS boss, Sarah Weiss. And we're bringing in Sarah Emily. We're bringing in oh, yeah. Sarah that's Sarah with an H. Hi, Sarah with an H. Go ahead and unmute yourself and say hi to everybody. All right, take two. Hey, Sarah with an H, go ahead and unmute yourself and say hi to everybody. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi. hi, Sarah without an H. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was part of our first conversation when we uh, were first introduced way back then uh, it's usually you know, like, the first thing we talk H about when and i was like sarah with an h and you're like oh yeah well i'm not no it's <laughs> not without. gonna work <laughs> no it's not it's not gonna work yeah well it clearly worked <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you again beautiful so sarah how did you meet sarah 
And uh, what impact has she been having on, on your life? Gosh, I met Sarah, whew, I don't even know how long ago. Um, I believe she was still working at that um, place in Kanata. Um, gosh, it was such a long time ago. Um, we met at a Christmas party a friend was having and um, I had brought some products to sell and enjoy the company and sip and chill and enjoy everything. And she hadn't even like even begun this journey really. So um, yeah, long time ago. She's been such a dream and pleasure to watch her journey. I've been a part of it and I am so blessed to be a part of that journey. Let me tell you. I feel the same way. Mm. Oh, I know you've been a part of my journey too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you've been watching since day it's, one. It's impossible not to notice uh, the, the friend of mine who has triplets. That's uh, <laughs> kind of stands out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you, uh, we met before I even thought about conceiving triplets. Um, you know, I'm an older mom. I actually got to the point in my life where I thought I maybe it's not in the cards for me. Maybe that's just not what um, I'm going to be good at. Maybe this is not part of who I'm going to be. And then, you know, lo and behold, apparently <laughs> I'm good for triplets all at once. <laughs> Yes, yes. And you're an amazing mother. You're an amazing friend. I've always appreciated having you um, in my life. If even, I mean, I think the last time we spoke was a few months ago. Uh, sometimes yeah. we don't speak for a couple months, but as soon as we speak, it's always like uh, we pick up from where we were. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think we always just kind of keep tabs on each other. Um, you know, I'm always following you. I always see what you do. But then, you know, life crazy triplet mom, and I, I do my best. And I know you do your best. And, and it's all like, we're, we just have that connection where we just we just know we understand we have that understanding connection. Um, and we are very positive people, you know, like, um, I don't always have the best days, but you always remind me that that's okay. It's okay. And it's okay to not always be positive because you take those moments to kind of perception and, and get that perspective back and straighten your sails and, and keep going. You know, it's all about keeping going. And I'm never going to stop um, looking for positive things in my life. Blessings. Trust me, there are days where I don't even know when, how I'm going to get out of bed. But, you know, I have three beautiful kids that inspire me to do that. And I have to be the best for them. And I want that best for them. And sometimes that means I have to take a little self-care. Self-care is not selfish. You know, I've, I have to share that with a lot of my moms. They always think, you know, I can't, I can't take that time for myself. But if you don't take that time for yourself, your cup is empty and you've got nothing to give. And that's the hardest thing for me now, because I'm always, I've always been one that takes care of everybody else. And even now I still have to remember to take care of me. And you are a constant reminder of that, that that's okay. And it's okay to have bad days because that makes your perspective of the good days easier. Yes, yes, yes. It, oh, I, I love when a friend of mine really takes serious what I share. Cause like that's, that's the whole point of whether it's being a coach or sharing our insight, like you just did, is that we're sharing something we've learned. You know, we get the yeah. opportunity to give that to others. You know, we've gone through this. And so that you don't have to go through certain pains, take what yeah. I've, what I've learned and use it the way you want. And I mean, you've got a lot going on in your life as a, as a mom of, of triplets, especially um, you didn't expect it. You didn't know you were kind of in a place where you, it could go either way. And then it happened and you stepped up. And of course, you're yeah. going to have days that challenge you. You're going to have days that oh, yeah. question your beliefs and stuff too. And it's yes. okay. And that even if I'm, I'm meant to take care of these children, they're, they're going to school, Sarah. <laughs> I'm freaking out. <laughs> it happens fast. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we didn't expect to have triplets. It wasn't something that was planned. We, you know, we wasn't anything that we were expecting to have, but it happened and it happened for a reason. It happens to, you know, people for a reason. Um, and of course my life is more than, than just my triplets, but um, right now, obviously that's the focus. <laughs> it's hard to focus on anything else really, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do at school. <laughs> I'm going to have to have like a small identity crisis. <laughs> well, and, and you've, you've, an empty house. 
Well, you've continued to support me in all of what you have gone through and, and vice versa. I will always continue to support you as well. But I just I want to thank you and take this moment to thank you that even though you've had whatever happening in your life, you've always managed to support me um, in my book launch. Uh, I, I believe you have a signed copy of my book as well. And, and I've read do. that and I just... I just want to thank you so much for always, always supporting me, no matter what. And it's a message to everyone. You know, yeah, our lives do get crazy, but stay connected with the people you love. Continue to support them however you can, if you can. And of, of course, understand when others can't be there if you, as soon as you need them at the drop of a dime, because we're all living our crazy lives, right? So yeah. just want to thank you. Well Oh, that's so sweet. Well, it's just, it's so super easy to support somebody like you because you're such a giver. You're so open. You're so honest. You are so transparent and you really uplift. And for, even if you don't know that you're there for somebody when you're actually not like connected mm -hmm. with them right away, or you don't like respond to messages or which you always do, but like, you know, if people get busy and they can't get back to you or whatever, you are always inspiring and you are always helping people with themselves, even though you don't know it, just because you are living your authentic life, no matter what, like you are there and the days where you're in your car and you're talking and you're just like, guys, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> And it's amazing because we all feel those things we all go through those things in our lives where we're just like what the actual heck is going on and it's hard to see the positive and all the perspective and everything but you're so quick to flip it and say listen no 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 like okay that's that's that now let's move forward <laughs> well there's something beautiful in everything and everyone right that's uh, exactly. something that 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 uh, Harrison was talking about. There is love in all of the pain, and if exactly. we can just open our eyes to see it, there's so much beauty to be had. Uh, you know, he talks about the vivid colors of life, the the opulence yes. of it, and it's found in some of the most painful moments we've experienced. Yeah, they're all signs pointing us. Yeah. 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 So thank you so much for hopping on. I know it was last second guys. This is, this is what I'm talking about. I, I asked her, I think about 30 <laughs> minutes ago, <laughs> 30 minutes ago. I'm like, Hey, you yeah. want to pop on? Just like for oh you, anything. God. Yeah. And anything girl, anything. Yeah. And I just, I thank you so much. Um, I'm not sure if I can mention this, but the, the gift certificate that I won from you last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She, she actually won a contest for a free vacation voucher a year ago. And I said, you know, when you know where you want to go, let me know. And this is a year later, literally today. She's yeah. like, uh, yeah. is that still, still available? I was still like, yeah, of you know, it Cause it was a year ago. COVID was really, you know, kicking up its feet. I have four-year-old triplets. I have a dog, like all these other, you know, stuff. And then of course we spent a good amount of time with each triplet and sometimes the two triplets simultaneously in the hospital. So it was like, Oh, and Sarah, I mean, you just really made my day, my day, my year. Like, that's incredible. What See, giving, just give and help people. And I'm sure that made you happy too. It did. It did. And it, it is right now. And I thank you so much. Oh, I love you. you, girl. Oh, this is so sweet. Thank you, Sarah, for hopping on. Thank each one of your children for allowing you this time and uh, you look like you're enjoying yourself in the sun there. Thanks for popping on the virtual book tour. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, Love wow. you, girl. What a joy. What a pleasure. And we go from uh, pure delight and triplets to um, shifting gears to real, raw, and vulnerable. We got Frankie M. Powers on here. Frankie, welcome to the virtual book tour. Ah, happy to be here, Adam. Happy to be here. Happy to support you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Frankie, yes. What's up, girl? Happy to have you here. You know the spotlight. You know the drill. You know how 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 much stress, stress, pressure, tension can arise when you're trying to get your message out. So I want you to share, you know, how you saw Sarah do it, how it landed on you and, and the impact that it has to allow you to share your message with with the public and with your fans? Well, the truth is that um, I met Sarah because uh, she just kept popping up everywhere, like in, on Facebook. And I'm like, okay, this, okay, not born this way, not born this way. Sarah's here, Sarah's here. It, it seemed like almost like I turned off my turn on my phone and there's Sarah. I mean, I couldn't, could, even if I wanted to, I couldn't get rid of her or push her away. 
But, um, but I saw the drive, I saw the dedication, and I saw you rise to number one best-selling author. And I was working on my book, and um, I'm like, okay, how can I, what do I, how, I need guidance. I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> and um, so I ordered the book, I read the book, great book, very inspiring, very, very um, you know, uh, uh, you know, when you finally say, you know what, I have to do this and you go out and, and do it. And, and then even when, when, and pushing the book and promoting the book and, and it was just, well, it led me to you and it led me to hire you as, as, as my coach to, to get my message out there. So, and I've been blessed. I've been blessed. Um, the lessons that, 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 that some of the lessons you've, you've taught me that I've embedded in me and, and that I I'm, I'm living them as literally as we speak. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's just, it's been an honor and a blessing. Uh, the honor and blessing has been mine as well. I mean, just because I'm coaching you doesn't mean I'm learning. Uh, I'm not learning from you every time I speak with you. You are a powerful soul as well. We coach each other, even if I am in a position where I'm kind of guiding you on, you know, the book stuff or whatever else. I'm still learning from you and every other coach that I'm working with. Uh, it's this beautiful flow of energy, and your book is about that too. That you know, being raw, uh, vulnerable has you know helped you give and receive at the same time. That's the beautiful flow of giving and receiving receiving and giving and receiving are both the same thing. And I've, I've loved to be able to have that flow with you and watch you create this book and not, not just the book, but the whole event around it, the, the release of it, the, um, the, the launch party you've had where you got on stage, you had a bunch of people who loved you surrounding you. You've been sharing your message. You go live, you do videos. You're, you're just, just like what you saw in me. And that's what I think what attracted you to me is because I was doing exactly what you wanted to do and you've done it. You've been doing it and it's reaching people. It's impacting people. I've seen a lot of your reviews and comments of the people that have gotten the chance to read your book already. And it's just, it's so inspiring to watch all these people just stand up and say, yes, thank you so much for what you've been doing. Your truth has created happiness, connection, love, expansiveness in so many people. So I want to thank you so much for, for being you, being vulnerable enough to share who you really are with people. That's what I'm all about. Wow. Uh, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I'm a little teary-eyed. Um, thank you. Thank you for those, for the beautiful words, Sarah. I, I really appreciate it. I mean, I, I kind of like don't know how to be another way. You know, I, I, I don't know how to you know, the, the whole thing of, you know, I don't live very much in my head. I live from my heart. And, and I, I, I believe that I was put on this earth to, to share that and to teach people that it's okay to really be your, your true self. And, and if people like you, then don't like you, then they don't like you, but, um, but you gotta be true to yourself because then you're, you're just being a, a figment. You, you get lost and you try and be what, what others want you to be. So thank you. You're welcome. I mean, this is the common theme of today. It's, it's what everyone's talking about is breaking free of our illusions that we've created for ourselves and how incredible it feels to finally own ourselves, to be vulnerable enough to share when we need help, when we need support, um, what we've gone through, what mountains we've had to climb, um, what rock bottoms we've had to hit you know, all these things that actually make us more powerful that we sometimes think makes us weak, makes us, we have these other illusions based on what we think people will think of us. I mean, I can't tell you how much I hid myself thinking that if the, if the world knew who I truly was, I'd be looked down on, I'd be this, I'd be that, I'd be um, seen as weak, I'd be seen as crazy, I'd be seen as X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And of course, some people do believe that, mm -hmm. but that's not what's in my perspective. I'm surrounded by people who see and hear my truth and are wowed by it. And it's the same for you. They hear about what you've gone through, the times that have really pushed and challenged you. And because you were vulnerable and strong enough and courageous enough to share it, you're changing lives. That's, that's where you and I are so in common. Yeah, I, I really believe that um, I needed to turn my hurt into hope, my pain into purpose. And, and all these, you know, when you're in there, right, when you're in that darkness or the, those, <laughs> that dark valley, um, you can't see the light. Or, but there's always a lesson. You know, I, I try and I'm, I mean, as we speak right now, there's some challenges that I'm going on. I'm like, okay, what's this trying to teach me? Like, there, there's something to learn here. What is it? Um, so when you look at it there, then you experience life that, you know, as, as you and I, um, we hear often and we share often that life is happening for us, not to us. Then we get to really take a look and take a step back and say, okay, what's going on here? What can I learn? So, um, and I learned a lot of this from you.
Thank you. I appreciate you showing up powerfully every time, every call, every time that we we've done things like this multiple times now where we are sharing a stage and sharing our vulnerability. So oh, I just want to thank you for that in general and also appreciate you coming on today, taking time out of your day. Again, day that is filled with impacting others and, and growing and, and checking in on yourself on where can I learn a lesson right now. And you took time out of that to, to support me. I just I love you and I appreciate you big time. Ah, I love you too. I love you too, Sarah. Thank you. While I have you both on here, and, and this is incredible, I'd like you to share a, a message that I really embrace uh, because you coach people, you help people change their lives. Um, some people will never make a decision to hire a coach, okay? And, and some people make a decision to hire a coach, dare I say, for the, for the wrong reasons, Okay. And, and, and that really shows up like this. And, and if you're listening to the public, I want you to hear it this way. People hire a coach for what they want, not for what they really need. And, and what I'd like you both to speak upon is how you can hear somebody, what they want in their life, knowing what they really need, and then hi, let them hire you for what they want, but build that trust build that, that vulnerability in them so that you can truly deliver what you need. Frankie, do you want to talk about how, you know, when you first hired me, it was all about the book, right? And yeah. <laughs> how many of our calls were only about 10 minutes worth of about the book? Yeah, a lot of them. Um, Cause the thing is, it's all of what, you know, Emotions run uh, rampant and, and, and our minds constantly changing and, and things shift from moment to moment, hour to hour. And, and oftentimes, again, like what I thought was going to go into the session the day before, the week before, ultimately it was, well, this is arising in me now, you know, and it's um, how, how can I get past this? I mean, you know, coach, therapist, um, uh, counselors, everyone in this realm, like, I mean, this, everyone needs to have a coach or a therapist, a counselor, someone in this field, because our minds and our thoughts and our emotions are always changing and they're always shifting. But uh, I mean, I think we're getting finally to a place where people are more open to it. But um, like, a, like really somebody in, in our realm, a coach, a therapist, I mean, they're more important than your primary doctor, because usually you only go there, you know, once a year, if you're not feeling sick, our minds, our emotions, our feelings, our thoughts, our relationships and relationships with others is always changing and shifting. So, I mean, it, listen, if you love yourself enough, like hire a coach. I mean, it, when people say I can't afford it, well, what's your life worth? I mean, really, what is your life worth? If you love yourself, if your life is worth something, if the people in your life are worth something then find those people to help you deliver the greatest life that you can have. Oh man, it's so true. And you know, it's funny is I have, I don't know, three coaches, all them have coaches, their coaches have coaches. And I'll tell you, it's a long line of success, happiness, success, freedom, success, financial success. That stuff is not a fluke. It's not a fluke. Why Frankie was able to have the success he's had in his book launch. He's been helped and guided, not just by me, but this by support all around him. You know, if you are creating a massive vision, and I mean, if you play small and you stay small then, and you're fine with that, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you have big vision, if you say, you know, I want to change this about the world, I want to, I want to impact more people. I want to be on stage. I want to, the bigger the vision, the more support you'll need. And I tell everyone, you don't need a coach. A coach is meant to catapult you so you can make the most of your life now, not in five years. That's what a good coach is for. A good coach will just accelerate your success. Again, four years ago, I know it's like, oh, this story again. Four years ago, I was on welfare, bed bug ridden uh, in a townhome just above ghetto. The reason I got out of it, the only reason was because I was vulnerable enough to ask for support. That's what led me to finding my first mentor. That's what led me to taking the feedback and starting to take responsibility to see I'm creating this life. I'm taking responsibility for the illusions that I've created that have held me back. It's not everyone I think I'm blaming. It's not the universe I think I'm blaming. It's not the judgments I have on everyone else. It's me. The only way I was able to get that was to be vulnerable enough to say, I need support. When I did that, it wasn't long before I was a six-figure earner in a network marketing company, went from there to writing a book and becoming a number one best-selling author. One of my coaches is $8,000 a month. Like That's how serious having a coach has been for me. 
And now I've been able to surround myself with massively powerful individuals and be able to unite them into one cause, empowered life, including Frankie. Frankie's uh, is a future empowered life coach as well. He'll be able to teach you guys a lot. Um, and it's because of that first moment where I was finally able to just say, I need support. I need guidance. When you try and bake a cake without a recipe for the first time, you're not going to be very successful. What a coach does is here's the recipe. Here's how you can think that will help you create the reality you want. Step one, step two, step three, instead of you trying to go through all the trial and errors that have us hitting these rock bottoms to learn the lessons. That's why a rock bottom is so great. But how many of those do you want to hit before you learn a lesson? Right? (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, to, to what you're saying, I mean, success, you know, we've, we hear often success leaves clues and, you know, be smart enough to know that we don't know everything. And we all have blind spots. Like we all have, we, even with all the knowledge, you know, that, that we've obtained, that you obtained, that I've obtained, like there's certain blind spots that sometimes in looking at our own life, we can easily see in others, <laughs> perhaps, you know, I, oh, I see this, but then in our own life, it's like, so we need somebody else to, to help uh, bring that out in us and, and to see life as it is, not as how we believe it's, it's, it's happening. So, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It doesn't matter how smart you are. There's blind spots only because there's just another level of growth for you. You know, it doesn't matter how smart you are, how accomplished you are, how successful you are. I mean, you can look at the most successful people in the world. They are supported, whether it's a, a business team, business mentors, they are well supported to create what they create. The, you know, you might be looking up to people like Jeff, Jeff Bezos and, um, you know, all, some of the biggest, most successful people in the world. Trust me, they are well, well supported, which includes them investing time, money, energy into those people so that those people can support them. So if anyone has ever thought that hiring a counselor, a therapist, coach or someone who can help them is a sign of weakness, get over that. I was that person. I thought that was a sign of weakness. I thought if I ever, you know, reached out to someone to help me, that was me admitting that I'm wrong, that I'm not good enough, that I'm not worthy. So I didn't want to do that. I thought that it was weakness. The moment that I said, screw that, I'm going to get someone to, to guide me was the moment my life finally turned around. It was the moment, the moment that my life finally had massive purpose and meaning. Actually, it always had purpose in me. It was the, the moment I finally saw it and recognized it, owned it, realized it, and created it. So let go of that old thinking, that old pride about if I admit I need help, it means I'm weak, I'm not good enough. It, that's, that's a crap illusion that's not serving you. And one of the best ways to get rid of that illusion, okay, is realize what, what do the best people have in the world? What if you're the best at something that you do, they give you something sometimes. They give you a trophy. You name me somebody who's winning trophies that doesn't have a coach. If you're winning Super Bowls, you have a coach. Tom Brady has a coach. He's a whole team of coaches. Tiger Woods was so brilliant in what he did that if even if you don't know another golfer, you know Tiger Woods because you won so many trophies. It, his coaches are legendary. So if you want to excel at what you're doing, okay, you get a coach. I used to think you, you had to have somebody who is better than what you were, than, than what you were. But I'll tell you what, there's no professional tennis player whose coach could beat them on the court. Okay. So those coaches, like Frankie was saying, provide access to your, uh, to your blind spots, provide you the ability to see things you don't see. Okay. And when you want to get better at what you're doing, they may be bringing solutions to the table you haven't thought of. We talked about that before. Frankie came on, wanted to write a book. Okay. Frankie empowers from rock bottom to mountaintops. But when he's in his coaching, 20% of his coaching is on the book and everything else is about what he, who he is, who he's going to be, how he shows up and what goes into the book, and who he is for creating the book. Um, So when you're looking at coaches, you need to go outside that box, and don't be tempted, don't be afraid, be real, raw, and vulnerable. 
Oh, I love that, Adam. Thank you for that. There you go, my model, brother, my model. And I just add, you know, what a lot of people don't know is that the word coach came from the word stagecoach, which was to help transport things from one place to another. And that's really what us as coaches we do. We help get you from where you are to where you want to go. Where, where do you want to go in your life? Okay, where are the blind spots? Let's take you there. That's what a coach, that's really what it is. That's so amazing. If you, had a, if you guys yeah. had a coach and her name was April, would she pop on the screen with us? Oh my goodness, she's been so patient. Um, before we get into everything else and in introductions, April, do you have anything to talk in the world of hiring coaches? Do I have what? <laughs> oh, please Hi, first of all, can I, first say, can I first say, Sarah, you look absolutely beautiful today. Oh, thank you. Yes, and I'm honored to be here. Okay, I'm ready. All right, so we'll get back to you in a second. Frankie, thank you so much for all your conversations with I regards think. to hiring a coach. Do you guys know each other? No, no, no I just, <laughs> just through Empowered Life. <laughs> Sarah, you are building a rock solid community. I can't wait to be at a party where all your Empowered Life coaches are there and to see everybody with each other for the first time. She's quite amazing. <laughs> We're all quite amazing. That's what's what's going to be so amazing about that party when it happens. And, and trust me, it will happen. Yeah, can't thank wait. <laughs> so much for thank you so much for popping on. Any final words? Oh well, no, just uh, thank you, thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Adam, for having me. Thank you, Sarah, for 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 being in this journey with me. Really, um, you, you know, you've been on 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 a uh, a big part of of um some real huge breakthroughs in my life. I mean, every time I think I've uh, like I finally okay, I, I finally got it. There's <laughs> There's always room for more. Always room for more. We're never finished. Nope. But um, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm happy and, and grateful to be able to support you here. And um, we'll, we'll talk soon. Thank you so much. Amazing. Love you, buddy. Love you, too. Mwah. All right. All right. Uh, Adam Bricker here with Sarah Weiss featuring her, the SAS boss, on the virtual book tour launch anniversary. And without further ado, she's been waiting she wants the spotlight on her. She's going to be <laughs> an influence of all sorts of level. April, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Adam. Appreciate you. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and say floor is yours. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I just have to say I'm super proud of you, Sarah. You have just done some absolutely amazing things here. And your book, by the way, is amazing. I, um, I remember the first time I actually met you face to face. And San Jose, when we were supposed to be going to Tony Robbins, and we spent the day in San Francisco, and and I heard your whole story, and I was just blown away, blown away. You are such an inspiration, just absolutely amazing person, and I love you so much. Oh, I love you too. Thank oh, you so sorry. much. Sorry, <laughs> I out for a second. Ooh, I do love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was an amazing trip. I'm really glad we went. We went even though the Tony Robbins event was canceled. That was what was awesome about it. And we knew it. We knew it was canceled, but we went anyways. And we just went for a drive. We went for drives. We went and visited places, got to know each other better. And uh, yeah, you know, if you could share some of what you've learned from um, my book or my story or getting to know me, um, just so people know a little bit more from your perspective. Well, I when I, you know, I, I, I kind of, I mean, I kind of knew you went through some things and, and, but until we took that drive, I was blown. I was like, what? <laughs> I had no, I, I would have never in a million years see, known that you even transcended the way you did transformed, however you want to <laughs> word it. And, um, and you showed me that picture of yourself and I was like, oh my God, I just blew me away, blew me away. And I think that, you, you know, even if I had known you prior to this, I still would have loved you. I think you have an amazing soul. I think your journey has been unbelievable. You know, I can kind of relate with the welfare mom part of it because I too was there many, many years ago with my boys. And, um, you know, it's, it's quite a fight. And to, you know, just be grateful. I wish I had had that back then, knowing that, knowing what we know now, and you know, having the strength that you had to get through it is just amazing. Amazing. I admire your strength. And, you know, I know that you lost a lot of friends along the way, but, you know, they say you lose the ones that no longer serve you. So you're in a good place now. And I just, yeah. I, I think you're an amazing person, really, truly. 
Thank you. Thank you. You are one of those amazing friends that stepped in and said, Hey, I'll love you. <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We, we had a really good time in San Jose, got a chance to even do a speaking in, engagement. And uh, I think I shared some, some stuff there too. And that was probably some of the first you heard some of that part of the story as well. Um, absolutely. Yeah. I think I actually remember when I was doing that, like we created like, um, uh, a mini Tony, Tony Robbins event because a lot of people did end up going. And I think I remember looking in the audience. I, I think I remember seeing your face and you were still shocked. You're like, Oh my God. <laughs> you would hear it the second time. I'm like, I just can't even wrap my brain around. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really amazing. Cool. Yeah. Your journey has been absolutely incredible. Incredible. And your books well written, very well done. Thank very you. Well Thank done. you. And yeah. to hear you live was really, really pretty. I'm glad I got to witness that. Your speaking event, even though it wasn't Tony Robbins, but it was a nice group and it was amazing to watch you live. And I saw you get triggered and you beat through that too. Do you remember that? I don't <laughs> With the remember. live, remember you live, live streamed to the wrong group? <laughs> <laughs> okay, on your video. Oh. I think I do. I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was fine. You got through live, it though. You did it. <laughs> live videos, they they do trigger me. I, oh man, there's always something going wrong with Facebook Live. <laughs> yeah, it was in like an old uh, Tony Robbins group or something, like not where you wanted it to be. I remember. Right, it was so right. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, you did okay. It out. We're going Facebook Live in four or five different groups. I wasn't planning on going oh, to today. But fabulous. We'll keep on sharing them out and about. Um, your Facebook Live. Uh, she's the SAS boss. Sarah Weiss, we're on with April Shook. Uh, April, um, reading uh, uh, Sarah's book, The um, Not Born This Way, uh, part of it, and thank you for helping her become a best selling author. Um, tell, tell people, you know, any kind of lessons that you might have learned from uh, the contents of that book. God, resilience and strength, and just keep pushing hard, you know, just keep going, go after what you want, you know, trust in yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Have compassion for yourself. You can make it. Resilience. That's powerful. That's that, great word. That is. That is. That explains her. <laughs> yes. Cool. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for for popping on today and being a part of not only uh, the community, uh, but making a difference in Sarah's life and in in fact making a difference in my life as well. Well, thank you. She makes a huge difference in a lot of people's lives, even my daughter. And she says hi, by the way. <laughs> oh, hi, Sarah. <laughs> I just noticed we're wearing the same necklace, by the way. <laughs> oh, yes. Tony Robbins, baby. I empower myself to release and dissolve anything that no longer serves me. It's that transformation, baby. <laughs> hey, and congratulations on your wedding, because I haven't had to say that live to both of you yet. So thank you. I'm so happy you found each other. Thank you. We found each other at a Tony Robbins event. Go figure. Yes, you did. Yes, I heard that. <laughs> Congratulations again. I love you both. I'm so excited to see where this takes us. Love you. So glad you're part of Empowered Life and this book tour. Absolutely. I love your book. It's amazing. I'll read it again, too. I probably I read it like I read it and then I read half of it again. And then I'm, I'm going to pick it up and finish it. And then I'm going to read it again. You always <laughs> get something new every time. <laughs> I love you, girl. Thank you. I so love much. you, too. All right, take care. Mwah. So it's like a love fest in here. <laughs> I ain't gonna deny that. Well, I see the clock on the wall says it's 235. So it's about time that we wrap things up here with the virtual book tour launch anniversary. Um, you know, I love being on the camera with you. I love presenting your message to the world, but I'm also gonna love hanging up with everybody and going to give you a big hug and a kiss in the other room. Yay. <laughs> I'm uh, right here, baby. There you go. So I'll be down there in a second. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have enjoyed the SAS boss, Sarah Weiss. Uh, the book, the book is called Not Born This Way. Uh, it is a best-selling uh, book. Uh, Sarah Weiss is a best-selling author. And as you heard live here, it has changed and impacted lives. So whether you pick up the book now or pick it up later, whether you heard from Sarah for the first time or like Frankie was saying, you popped up everywhere and I heard all about you and, and, and embraced that connection with you and got so much more of what he needed than he ever thought would he'd, he'd enjoy. 
Um, so I'm, I'm this close to wrapping up, but there's somebody named Alexandra um, who said she'd like to say something to you before we close. You open for that? Of course. Of course. All right. Uh, Alexandra, from the magic of Facebook Live combined with Zoom on the virtual book tour, may you appear on the screen with us now. I didn't say the magic <laughs> words. Abra Kadabra. No. Sorry, love. Um, I'll push the button. Sometimes technology. Oh, wait. She's calling me on the phone. <laughs> Hello? Yes, Alexandra. Yes, love. We're, we're ready for you. Come on in. All righty. Obviously, you know, she wasn't really on the phone. Um, it says join in, but I can't get her on. So uh, my hug and my kiss are waiting for you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming in, being a part of the virtual book tour. Uh, so much love to you, and we hope to see you in our communities over and over again and develop great relationships with you. Any last words, Sarah? Uh, well, first, I'll thank Alexandra for showing up, even though she couldn't get on. Uh, love and appreciate you. She's also an empowered life coach. In fact, I think every single person on today was an empowered life coach, because I guess everyone who gets to know me gets to know how powerful they really are. And that's that's a big thing about me. If you know me, watch out. You're going to end up walking away more empowered than when you first started a conversation with me. And uh, everyone becomes um, so powerful in their in their truth, like you know, like I talk about in my book, that they realize their true gifts. And this is anything, anyone that can do this, anyone can have the power to impact people. I don't care what you think your situation is or who you think you are. You have the ability and the power to impact people. And what I want to do for that, for that fact, is to give you the opportunity to do that for people, to step into your power, own your gifts, your experiences, and allow you to share that with the world so that they don't have to go through the pain, strug uh, struggle, the rock bottoms that you might have had to go through. You don't need to be some high paid, certified with 10 different certifications coach. I don't have any certifications myself, but because I've experienced certain things and had the ability to step into my power, own my truth and share what's happened to me without the fear of what people will think of me, I've been able to impact people and change their lives. And anybody can do that. So if you have a conversation with me, watch out, you're going to feel your power start to come true. And I would love to put you in front of more people so that you can change the world with me. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Um, I can easily say this. I love you. Um, I'm glad I'm a part of your life. I'm glad I'm in your community. And uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the virtual book tour. Love you all so much. Mwah. Let's see if we can't get Alexandra on. Um, her thing keeps blinking on and off. We're off of Facebook Live, by the way, honey. So I just wanted you to do that. And yeah, her, she goes like in and out. So uh -huh. um, I love you. I'm signing off and I'm coming down to kiss you. <laughs> I love you. Bye now. Mwah.